I'm Anmesh Kumar Sahu, and I'm the product of a beauty pageant and a rather unique one for that matter. I became the youngest winner of uh, Mr. Gay World India in 2016 while I was still studying engineering and uh, then went on to do my master's in design. And at the moment, I work right at the intersection of tech and design. I work as a visual designer, as a technical artist, and above everything else, now I'm also exploring the space of NFTs. So I'm now an NFT artist where I bring in a more empowered, dignified and gorgeous representation of queer femme folks, non-binary folks and trans folks. Because, well, let's face it, we haven't been represented really well in popular media. And I believe that we truly can change that with us telling our stories of contextual queerness, one artwork at a time. I came out at the age of 16. Uh, so I've been gay, I, I've been an out and proud gay man for quite a while now, but uh, I've also been closeted thanks to our heteronormative, narrow societal norms. But hey, the bottom line is the fact that I have been gay for quite a while now, and I believe that I'm certainly qualified enough to share this very well-kept secret with you all. How to be successfully gay in India. And I have managed to come up with not just one or two, but six ways, pun intended, to be successfully gay in India. So what are we waiting for? Let's dig right into it. Number one, you may be gay, but thou shalt not be effeminate. One of the most important questions that has plagued my life time and again is, why do you talk like a girl? Now, you see, we live in a country still where men are on one side and women on the other side. And in between lies a massive void. Well, it's not really a void because it's filled with misogyny, sexism, chauvinism, and the most important spice of them all, patriarchy. We all might have heard of homophobia, but there's an even greater monster that lives in most gay folks here in India. And that monster is called femphobia. Because patriarchy taught us that men are above women. So therefore, femme queer folks are obviously at the bottom of this invisible social hierarchy, even within the queer community. Even Bollywood taught us that femme queer men are either horny, caricaturish, sex seeking maniacs, or the predatorial transgender who's only interested in the muscular, quintessential North Indian looking fair skinned hero. You don't believe me? You must consider checking out some of the most outrageous comments that have been put together in some of my last or previous TEDx videos. Comments range from too femme to how I should consider visiting a psychologist. Sometimes I wonder, life would have been so much easier had I been a quintessential cisgender, heterosexual guy. But uh, hey, I wouldn't have had all this lovely content to share with you all today or this incredible stage of the TEDx that the folks at TEDxXIMB have provided me with. So thank you so much for throwing all these lemons at me. I have managed to make some lovely pink lemonade out of it. Number two, if you're gay, the only valid career choice for you is to some way be associated with fashion. And the world of fashion, even according to some really popular films and news and television channels here in India, because that's how we fact check. There's also WhatsApp University, but yeah, we will not get into that for now. So yes, fashion ki dunya is plagued with drugs, late night parties, scandals, and of course, the most dreadful of them all, sex. We might be a country of 1.3 billion, but we don't have sex. Even the clothes we wear today, they don't need really any skill to be made. India might be one of the world's largest textile producing countries and largest textile exporters, but pattern making is obviously a child's play. So is developing full-fledged collections, managing carriers, providing employment to the otherwise grossly underpaid tailors, or representing India at international fashion weeks. All that you need to accomplish all of the above mentioned is some booze, LST, and late night parties. And there you go. You're good to go with a career in fashion. That's fashion for us here in India. This popular perception has stopped many femme folks and even cis head folks and their parents from not letting the kids actually pursue their dreams. And more importantly, 
not letting queer individuals believe that they truly can be anything that they wish to be in their lives. We, we are a country which has given birth to Menaka Guruswami, senior advocate at the Supreme Court of India, who also happens to be an out and proud lesbian woman. We're also home to Disha Pinky Sheikh, a writer, poet, and trans woman who has been appointed the spokesperson of Maharashtra unit of Vanchit Bahujan Agadhi. We also have Parmesh Shahani, an author, LGBTQ inclusion advocate, and vice president at Godrej Industries Limited, who also happens to be an out and proud gay man. We're also home to Sushant Divkekar or Rani Kohinoor, who's an iconic drag legend of sorts right now in, in the mainstream media for that matter. But who cares of our struggles in climbing up the success ladder or acknowledging our literally undeniable existence in every field that there is? Number three, dating life. If you want to have a valid dating and sex life here in India as a gay man, you must give in to every ideology that exists around the gender binary. If you're a femme man, leave your femme identity in the garbage bin, as if being femme was a choice. Misogyny has broken the shackles of heterosexuality and made its way to the homosexual world. You may be gay, but you must act like a cisgender straight man. You must have six pack abs, big biceps, and never ever think of blurring the gender binary. And hey, they'll also tell you that it's not internalized, self-inflicted homophobia. It's just a sexual preference, you all. Number four, if you have political views, you better not. Because nobody's protecting you from unwarranted rape threats, death threats, and blatant homophobia and femphobia on the social network. I mean, you're gay, and then Upar say you're femme as well. You just asked for all this hate by being political, or maybe not. Number five, there might be clear mentions of LGBTIQA plus folks in Indian mythology. Case in point, Arjuna cross-dressing as the teacher Brihannala, the change in Shikhandi's gender, Ardhanari Shwara as the androgynous composite form of Shiva and Parvati, but they will all either be invisibilized in popular culture or just sidekicks. And you must be made to believe that Indian culture in no way supports homosexuality or validates trans existence. India is a country which is driven by mythology. So even when we do exist in mythology, somehow we still do not. And finally, number six, marriage equality is obviously a foreign concept. So fundamental civil rights like marriage equality, adoption rights, not happening. In fact, in February of 2021, the center opposed any move to accord legal sanction to same-sex marriages here in India. For your information, decriminalization of Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code does not automatically translate into fundamental right for same-sex couples to get married. In simple words, marriage equality in India is a long haul. It'll happen, but like in another 100 years, when most of you listening to me, including me, will be dead and gone. So what do we do till then? Fight back, struggle, because who cares about quality life? Hello. And those, my friends, were the six ways to be successfully gay in India. But hey, there's a plus one, and perhaps the most important one of them all. Ditch all of them six pointers because there's no such thing as a gay monolith. There are as many ways to be gay in India as there are colors in the rainbow. And more importantly, there is no protocol defined by the society because for the most part, they choose to not acknowledge us. But there's a silver lining. We are luckier because we get to choose how we would like to be represented. We get to rewrite what's already been written in popular perception. We must acknowledge that we have that choice and we must rewrite that story with a happier ending, replacing judgment with acceptance, disrespect with dignity, and hopelessness with faith and resilience. There is hope at the end of this tunnel named exclusion. And that, my friends, that ray of light is called inclusion. And you can help us bring in that change by becoming stronger allies to us. 
Of course, we will share our stories as the LGBTIQA plus community whenever we can afford to in the form of artworks, illustrations, Instagram live sessions, films. And of course, we will become a part of protests and fundraisers whenever we can. But we can't do it alone. We also need you. But the question is, how does one really become a good, strong ally? Let me help you with that. Number one. Research, research, and lots of research. Now, every time I was asked, are you gay? Way back in college, my heart would sink into my stomach. So would questions like, why do you talk like a girl? I didn't choose to be femme. I just talk like myself. Or questions like, when did you realize you were gay? These questions can often be uncomfortable to answer and just insensitive to ask anyone. I do not like being reminded of that time when I wanted to kill myself. It was traumatic. In case you choose to be a strong ally, please make sure that you do some research yourself. Go ahead, Google, and find answers to questions and your queries. Make yourself more aware of the queer history, and in this case, more aware of the queer Indian history. Contextual queerness is extremely important and we must know and learn about it. We might have come a long way from when AIDS didn't even have a name, but we still have a very, very long way to go. And behind this beautiful rainbow that you see, it casts the shadow of the trials and tribulations of this LGBTIQA plus community. All this effort will make sure that your LGBTIQA plus friends do not have to relive their horror over and over again. Number two, listen. We live in an era where we have access to queer Indian stories via Instagram live sessions, YouTube videos, TEDx talks like the one that we're having right now, and even roundtable conversations and panel discussions. So to best understand how to help the LGBTIQA plus community, Please listen to what we are telling you. In case there are local speakers, speakers around you on this specific topic, please go ahead and attend their talks and be attentive. Podcasts are another great resource. Please, please, please do not perform performative allyship. If you were active on social media last month during the Pride Month celebrations in June, you must have noticed brands, brands changing their logos to rainbow logos and coming up with beautiful pride merchandise. Of course, you're going to come, come up with pride merchandise because, well, they look good and they sell really well. And of course, you want to tap into the pink economy. But hey, ask these brands. How many of them know or have inclusive policies at their workplace? Heard of non-discriminatory policies? Heard of trans support groups? Heard of actively hiring trans members of the community? No? Then that, my friends, is performative allyship. Because basically, it's using the struggles of others to make yourself look like a more moral person. Rainbow logos without policies are not really doing much for us. If you're a brand trying to really be a strong ally, Use a part of your profits in selling your pride merchandise and contribute it to the queer relief and active fundraisers by and for the queer community. Pinklist India, for instance, has a list of active queer relief fundraisers always on the website. So please go ahead and check out on the website and contribute if you can. Number four, speak up and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Perhaps you've heard of homophobic language or derogatory language being used by your own family members or by your own friends. Take some time out at your next family reunion or even your family WhatsApp group to challenge people's views and opinions for those who are not there. As humans, we're obviously averse to change. If your life has been one of comfort, it is very difficult to voluntarily give up on all of that comfort. But this is exactly the time when you need to speak up for your queer friends and acquaintances. I remember every time I was bullied in school and there would be a friend of mine who would stand up and raise his or her voice for me, it would give me a little bit of confidence. And even that little ray of light helps. At any point, if you really feel like the other person who you're speaking to is simply not uh, you know, 
they don't budge away or they don't budge from their problematic views then actively disengage do not be complicit this will perhaps help them introspect and question their views number 5 learn from your mistakes i grew up in a heteronormative world myself and therefore i too had a very problematic view of the queer world i had to learn to unlearn my bigoted and homophobic views and i always keep the, saying this all the time that you know i was the victim of homophobia only till the time i believed in homophobia and i stopped believe and i stopped being a victim of homophobia the day i stopped being a homophobe and the way i learned was also by acknowledging when and where i went wrong i then made sure that i didn't make those mistakes again one does learn through trial and error so welcome failure but also learn from it number 6 amplify the voices and messages of the queer community members there are so many incredible queer rights activists from the community even younger folks right now coming in and joining this force this rainbow revolution and speaking out and speaking of their own stories and stories of you know marginalized india and these messages need to be shared in short promote others voice and do not center yourself in this conversation it's okay to feel bad about your role in this unjust society but as an ally it's necessary to realize that your role is one of support and lastly but certainly not the least show up we have some incredible beautiful pride parades that happen all throughout the year and now nowadays it also happens in two tier and three tier cities here in india and that's incredible it's happening because we are queer and we are here and we are ready to share our stories with you all so please go ahead and become a part of these beautiful rallies and beautiful pride marches you will learn a lot more about the community by actually being there in person take responsibility for your actions educate your peers attend protests sign petitions and donate if you can volunteer your time and again the only way to be successfully gay in india to be successfully lgbtiqa plus in india to be successfully queer in india is to be you so write it well thank you thank you so much